Welcome to short YouTube channel. I want to walk us through the history of cryptocurrency. How we journey through cryptocurrency and how we journey through marketing and trading as a whole. So the history of cryptocurrency is being led or is being is being ushered by the history of trading from the stone age to this our modern, uh, our modern jet age so just go with me through this video tutorial and get the main idea of everything about the history coin has become all the rage some historians see it as the latest phase in the evolution of money. Many technologists are intrigued by the potential of its innovative blockchain technology. For numerous entrepreneurs, especially early adopters, cryptocurrency represents a once-in-a-generation wealth opportunity. However, it's also suffered numerous cybercrimes and market crashes, resulting in a chorus of critics warning that it's risky and perhaps a pyramid scheme. To understand how we got to this point, and what all the excitement and controversy is about, let's take a look at the history of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is the latest attempt to reinvent the way we exchange money. Throughout history, humans have relied on some sort of payment system to purchase goods and services. People initially used a bartering system, swapping things like livestock for grain. But this proved to be difficult and inconsistent to determine value. To remedy the inconvenience of bartering, intermediaries such as gold were used as a medium of exchange. Unfortunately, precious metals have a lim limited supply because they are difficult to produce. Thus, gold and silver were eventually replaced by government-issued currencies, or what's known as fiat, such as the US dollar and euro. But because it's easy to make a lot of paper money, fiat faces issues such as debasement and inflation. There has been one consistent theme regarding the evolution of payments. It's that people prefer payments that are convenient and transactional. Consequently, some economists and historians consider cryptocurrency the most important payment invention since gold. Bitcoin began the cryptocurrency revolution when it launched in 2008, but it had several earlier ancestors and developments that made it possible. The origin of cryptocurrency is, of course, related to the beginning of the Internet, which revolutionized the world like nothing before. After all, if there was no global system of interconnected computer networks, cryptocurrency wouldn't be able to function. David Chalm is widely regarded as the earliest pioneer in cryptocurrency. In 1983, while he was a graduate student at Berkeley, he published a research paper that introduced the idea of an untraceable digital cash. Chalm is sometimes called the godfather of anonymous communication because he invented many of the cryptographic protocols that laid the groundwork for cryptocurrency. He believed that privacy was necessary for an open society in the Internet age, but that government, corporations, and other faceless organizations couldn't be counted on to provide it. Therefore, it was necessary to create and encourage widespread use of strong cryptography and privacy tools. Chom's ideology would help inspire the creation of Bitcoin decades later. Unfortunately, his ideas were way ahead of his time and struggled to gain adoption. Digicash, the company Chom founded in 1989 to make his vision a reality, declared bankruptcy and he abandoned the project. Initially, there was great reluctance to utilize the internet for transactions. Banks and merchants were deterred by technical difficulties and legal uncertainties. The first true e-commerce transaction didn't happen until the early 1990s, when online merchants began listing products on the World Wide Web and accepting credit cards. In the mid-1990s, the dot-com boom began, and with it came the first working digital currencies. One of the first was e-gold, founded in 1996 and backed by gold. It was unique compared to traditional payment methods in that it was purely digital in nature, and transactions were completely irreversible. It became hugely popular and had more than 5 million users. Although eGold was likely started with benevolent intentions, 
it quickly became a haven for criminals and was subsequently shut down by the U.S. government. Silicon Valley entrepreneurs looked for new ways to improve online transactions. A major breakthrough came in 1998 when Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, and others founded PayPal. This worldwide online payment system supports money transfers over the internet and serves as a digital alternative to traditional paper methods like checks and money orders. PayPal remains to this day a very popular and successful way of sending money in cyberspace, although it now faces growing competition from Google Wallets, Apple Pay, and others. While both eGold and PayPal helped facilitate online transactions, they lacked many of the characteristics of cryptocurrency. For one thing, both represent a claim of value. eGold was a digital representation of gold, while PayPal was a digital transfer of fiat, or currency. A cryptocurrency, by contrast, is a value itself. Additionally, both eGold and PayPal were managed by a central authority coordinating transactions. Cryptocurrencies, on the other hand, are decentralized, meaning there's no middleman that coordinates transactions between two parties. Still, eGold and PayPal were important precursors to Bitcoin because they demonstrated the ability to utilize cyberspace to transfer funds and make purchases. Now, around the same time that these online payment systems launched, a group of NSA researchers published a paper in a law journal that outlined a system very much like Bitcoin in which secure financial transactions were possible through the use of a decentralized network. In 1998, two computer scientists took this concept a step further. Nick Szabo designed a mechanism for decentralized digital currency he called Bitgold. Zabo proposed using smart contracts, which are digital contracts that cut out the middleman using computer supervision. He later worked with Bitcoin's fat founder to help Bitcoin get off the ground. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Wei Dai outlined the basic principles of all modern-day cryptocurrency systems in a paper entitled Be Money, an Anonymous Distributed Electronic Cash System. Neither Bitgold nor Be Money were ever implemented, but they are widely regarded as direct precursors to Bitcoin's architecture. In fact, Dai's work was cited in Bitcoin's proposal. As a tribute to Y Day's uh, contribution, the smallest unit is now uh, the smallest unit of a now popular cryptocurrency known as Ethereum is called the Way. Despite these breakthroughs, though, it would take another decade before the idea for cryptocurrency became a reality. Enter Bitcoin. Although Bitcoin isn't the first proposed cryptocurrency, it's notable because it's the first working cryptocurrency. Equally important is the trailblazing record-keeping technology that it introduced to the world, namely blockchain. Bitcoin's history begins on Halloween in the year 2008. October 31st, 2008 was the day that Satoshi Nakamoto published his white paper, which outlined his vision for this new currency and technology. Nakamoto proposed a purely peer-to-peer -peer vision of electronic cash that would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Only eight pages long and distributed for free online, this white paper began the whole cryptocurrency and blockchain frenzy. The launch of Bitcoin occurred in the midst of the global financial crisis of 2008, and that's probably not a coincidence. The public had become very distrustful of the government and big banks to manage their money, which opened the door to a new way of doing things. Nakamoto offered a forward-thinking way to change long-established financial protocols. Using Bitcoin, funds could be potentially transferred instantly, anonymously, and without middleman fees or government oversight. Many and varied successful people took notice of this and wanted to be part of it. Nakamoto's fame spread so far that he was even nominated for the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2015. Now you may be wondering, well, who is this visionary and where did he come from? This is where the history of cryptocurrency turns into something of a mystery novel. Nakamoto completely disappeared shortly after launching Bitcoin. No one really knows who Bitcoin's founder is. The name Satoshi Nakamoto is believed to be a pseudonym, and his identity remains a mystery. He could be a she, or he could be a group of people. Although there have been many rumors, claims, and debates about who is Nakamoto, his identity has never been adequately verified. 
Adding to the mystery, Nakamoto has not accessed his Bitcoin wallet, which contains over a million Bitcoins, placing its value in the billions of dollars. Before banishing, Nakamoto appointed a successor, successor Gavin Anderson, a software developer who helped build Bitcoin's original coin. Nakamoto's parting words in an email stated, I've moved on to other things. It's in good hands with Gavin and everyone. Anderson later founded a nonprofit organization called the Bitcoin Foundation, which helped further develop and publicize Bitcoin. In homage to Nakamoto, the smallest fraction of a Bitcoin that can be sent is known as a Satoshi. Bitcoin came to life on January 3rd, 2009. That's the date of the so-called Genesis block, or the first block of transactions published on the Bitcoin blockchain. The first block also includes text from Nakamoto, noting that failure of traditional banking. Cryptocurrency was no longer just an idea at this point. Now Nakamoto's dream was a reality, but it took time to turn the fledgling technology into a robust, anonymous, decentralized payment system. Initially, Bitcoin had no monetary value. Its computer software was available free online and programmers would acquire Bitcoin through a process known commonly as proof of work or mining, which involves the solving of difficult cryptographic problems using computers. Miners would trade Bitcoin back and forth for fun. May 22nd, 2010 marked a key date in Bitcoin's development. It was the first time anyone had actually used Bitcoin to purchase any kind of product or good. As such, it's a very notable date in cryptocurrency history and it's often colloquially referred to as Bitcoin Pizza Day. On that day, a Florida programmer named Lazo Hanyex posted on a Bitcoin forum that he was interested in buying pizzas with Bitcoins. He negotiated to get $25 worth of pizza, which worked out to two pizzas delivered by Papa John's, in exchange for 10,000 of his Bitcoins. Now, when you crunch the numbers, that transaction pegged the price of Bitcoin to a quarter of a penny. So that means that he had to pay four Bitcoin for every penny worth of pizza. That transaction essentially established the initial real world price or value of Bitcoin. And it showed that Bitcoin could actually be used as a means of payment. Now, soon after that, Bitcoin miners uh, began realizing they could actually make money off of their Bitcoins. And they started to sell their Bitcoins on exchanges such as Mt. Gox and Trade Hill. Over a five-day period beginning on July 12th of 2009, the market value of Bitcoin increased 10 times from less than a penny to 8 cents. By November 2010, Bitcoin's market cap reached $1 million and Bitcoin's price reached 50 cents per coin. The first mobile transaction occurred in December 2010. The use of Bitcoin to make purchases really took off in January 2011 when a website known as Silk Road was established. Silk Road served as an online marketplace for selling illicit drugs and it accepted Bitcoin. This helped Bitcoin get going because all of a sudden it had a real use case. Because cryptocurrency can be sent by anyone to anyone with relative anonymity, the digital rights group Electronic Frontier Foundation dubbed it a censorship resistant digital currency. Consequently, WikiLeaks began accepting Bitcoin when the U.S. government pressured traditional payment processors such as Visa and MasterCard to block donations. Soon, many people were using Bitcoin to fund all kinds of secret and sorted transactions. By February 2011, Bitcoin reached parity with the U.S. dollar, selling at a rate of one Bitcoin for one dollar. Unfortunately, Bitcoin's association with unlawful sites tainted its reputation. Despite Silk Road ultimately being shut down by law enforcement and many legitimate businesses now accepting Bitcoin, to this day, Bitcoin is often stigmatized in the media as a currency that only criminals use to buy and sell illegal things. But publicity is publicity, as they say. And this saying certainly proved true for Bitcoin. Following an article published by Gawker about Silk Road and Bitcoin, Bitcoin's price skyrocketed. If it catches on, Time Magazine predicted in an April 2011 story, Bitcoin might pose a threat not just to governments, but to payment processors as well. Bitcoin hit almost $30 in June 2011 before falling and ending 2011 valued at just over $5. Thus began a trend in price volatility. 
which remains present to this day. And Bitcoin's increasing media coverage and rising price began to catch the attention of other tech entrepreneurs who saw the potential to make money from cryptocurrency. For the first couple of years of its existence, Bitcoin had been synonymous with cryptocurrency because it was the only cryptocurrency. It wasn't until 2011 that other competitors appeared, such as Litecoin. These alternative coins, or altcoins as they're often called, were forks of Bitcoin using its open source code and were intended to improve upon certain elements of the Bitcoin design, such as speed or anonymity. There are presently thousands of cryptocurrencies, but Bitcoin remains by far the leading one in terms of recognition and market cap. The next five years, from 2012 to 2016, brought about major growth for cryptocurrency, coupled with several significant setbacks. First, some of the highlights. In 2012, WordPress became the first notable online merchant to accept payment in Bitcoin. And they were eventually followed by other major retailers, such as Microsoft, Overstock.com, and PayPal. This was considered to be the first step towards cryptocurrency becoming widely accepted internationally as a legitimate payment method. In total during this period, an estimated 160,000 merchants accepted Bitcoin. Bitcoin also became part of pop culture. Popular network TV shows such as CBS's The Good Wife featured storylines involving Bitcoin. In 2013, the world's first Bitcoin ATM opened in San Diego, California. And there are now thousands of cryptocurrency ATMs worldwide. On November 28, 2013, Bitcoin passed the $1,000 mark per coin. This was quite remarkable because that one Bitcoin that was worth only a quarter of a penny four years earlier and used to buy a pizza was now worth $1,100. Bitcoin's market cap had surpassed $1 billion and its network was moving more money than Western Union. Wall Street and U.S. government officials began paying more attention to cryptocurrency. A Bitcoin ticker was added to the Bloomberg terminal so that Bitcoin's value could be tracked in real time. A U.S. court opined in a ruling, it's clear that the Bitcoin can be used as money. It can be used to purchase goods or services. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke said, virtual currencies may hold long-term promise, particularly if the innovations promote a faster, more secure, and more efficient payment system. Prominent venture capitalists and entrepreneurs began entering the market. The New York Stock Exchange invested $75 million in Coinbase, which would become the largest United States-based cryptocurrency exchange. Meanwhile, the Winklevoss twins, Tyler and Cameron, launched a cryptocurrency exchange named Gemini, which would go on to become a top exchange as well. The brothers used a chunk of their $65 million legal settlement from Mark Zuckerberg, whom they accused of stealing their idea for Facebook, to invest heavily in Bitcoin a few years earlier when it was only $120 per coin. That daring investment ultimately made them billionaires. But not all the news during this period was good. There were also a number of setbacks for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. One was environmental concerns. Bitcoin was drawing criticisms from environmentalists about the amount of energy its network used to process transactions. In response, two programmers, Sonny King and Scott Nadel, proposed using a new method known as proof of stake to reduce the processing power and electricity necessary to manage cryptocurrency transactions. Many cryptocurrencies developed since then utilize this more environmentally friendly method. Another big concern was cybersecurity. February 2014, the largest cryptocurrency exchange, Mt. Gox, was hacked, resulting in account holders collectively losing nearly a million bitcoins. The entire cryptocurrency market suffered. This scandal illustrates the costly risks involved with cryptocurrency and why critics sometimes liken it to the old Wild West. Bitcoin also encountered some legal obstacles during this time period. Thailand banned Bitcoin that same year, and more trend nations would follow. The threat of regulation gave pause to potential institutional investors. Cryptocurrency, however, remained legal in America and Europe. As a result of this combination of good and bad news, Bitcoin's price significantly fluctuated up and down during this four-year period. Bitcoin's roller coaster ride in value reached new heights in 2017. The year 2017 brought unprecedented growth for Bitcoin and for the entire cryptocurrency market. 
The granddaddy of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, began the year worth about $1,000 per coin. A major Bitcoin milestone occurred in March 2017 when one Bitcoin hit $1,200 and overtook the price of an ounce of gold. Bitcoin's price continued to skyrocket for the next 10 months as many new investors jumped in due to FOMO, an acronym that means fear of missing out. Riding Bitcoin's coattails, the entire cryptocurrency market flourished, with more than 1,000 cryptocurrencies being sold on exchanges, and many attaining incredible profit margins. By June 2017, one Bitcoin was worth nearly $3,000, and the total market cap for cryptocurrency hit $100 billion. Bitcoin's price continued to rise rapidly. In late November, it hit $10,000 for the very first time, which was a tenfold increase from the beginning of the year. On December 17, 2017, Bitcoin set a new record that's yet to be broken. It hit nearly $20,000 per coin. Meanwhile, the total market cap for cryptocurrency peaked shortly after that at around $800 billion. If cryptocurrency can be said to have a golden age in its young life, 2017 was definitely it. But the quick parabolic gains worried many financial experts, including Warren Buffett, who warned that cryptocurrency was a bubble that would end badly. Turns out he may have been right. Early in 2018, the market came tumbling down. A series of disconcerting events, including new government regulations in many Asian countries and a bankruptcy court ordering Mt. Gox to liquidate its remaining 100,000 bitcoins to repay creditors, caused Bitcoin's price, along with the cryptocurrency market, to enter a great recession. By summer 2018, the price of Bitcoin had dipped below $6,000 and the total cryptocurrency market had shrunk to about $215 million, illustrating the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or FUD, that continued to surround cryptocurrency. New York Post business columnist John Crudell declared Bitcoin would never recover. He said, it's a fake currency, which I like to call Bitcoin. It's a Ponzi scheme, confidence game, fraud. Bitcoin is headed for the value of zilch. It's only a matter of when. Many others agree with these dire forecasts. Despite these ominous predictions, a number of recent developments have many investors expecting a turnaround. An April 2018 study conducted by Ipsos found the number of Americans and Europeans investing in cryptocurrency was expected to triple in the near future. Goldman Sachs announced plans to open a crypto trading desk. BlackRock and Facebook expressed interest in venturing into cryptocurrency as well. Most recently, the Marshall Islands enacted a law that replaces the U.S. dollar with its own cryptocurrency as the country's official currency. Bitcoin could someday reach $100,000 or more, or it could go to zero. It's anyone's guess. Still, considering we're less than a decade on from cryptocurrency's implementation, it seems likely that we're just seeing the start of adoption for this bold idea. It's important to note that 2018 wasn't the first time Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency market experienced a major recession. There have been a couple other big corrections. So here are the latest developments in cryptocurrency. In the middle of 2020, cryptocurrency began to emerge from its two and a half year recession that began in early 2018. Indeed, by the end of 2020, it was clear that a new bull market was beginning one that would exceed even 2017's digital gold rush. Bitcoin's price surged from about $13,000 at the start of November 2020 to nearly $30,000 by New Year's Eve, shattering its previous record. As of mid-February, Bitcoin was trading above $50,000 per coin. Meanwhile, the entire cryptocurrency market achieved a valuation of $1.7 trillion, doubling its previous high in early 2018. So what happened in the past few years to create this dramatic turnaround? And how high might the crypto market and Bitcoin go? The short answer is there were a number of factors that created this new bull market. First, the industry matured back in early 2018 there were billion-dollar projects that were basically just an idea 
but had no working product. These valuations were absurd, and Smart Money realized we were in a bubble and left. By 2020, many of these cryptocurrencies, which were based on vaporware, finally developed into useful working products. As a result, some cryptocurrency companies even formed partnerships with major companies such as Google. In addition, several new innovative projects emerged, particularly ones that focused on decentralized finance, or DeFi. Basically, DeFi involves crypto entrepreneurs recreating traditional financial instruments in a decentralized architecture, outside of companies and government's control. A well-known example of this is Aave. This was a project that began in 2017 under a different name. It was rebranded, and it finally came into fruition in 2020. Aave allows people to borrow and lend out cryptocurrency. If you're borrowing the cryptocurrency, you pay interest on it. But if you lend it out, you receive the interest. So Aave functions like a bank might by facilitating peer-to-peer -peer loans. Another factor, and perhaps the biggest one, was there were a lot more investors. First, there were more retail investors, or regular people, who decided to invest in cryptocurrency. And the reason for this is demographics. Younger generations, including millennials and Generation Z, are now in the workforce and they have money to spend. These two groups are much more open to investing in cryptocurrency compared to older generations who prefer traditional investments, such as 401k accounts. Secondly, a great deal of institutional money began pouring into cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin. Payment platforms such as PayPal and Square began allowing consumers to easily buy cryptocurrency. Major banks and hedge funds entered the space. Universities such as Yale invested part of their endowments into cryptocurrency. And big companies such as Tesla bought a bunch of Bitcoin. More than any other factor, institutional investors and their deep pockets helped push Bitcoin's price to new highs. And Bitcoin's gains trickled down to other cryptocurrencies. The final factor for the bull run was COVID-19. In order to stave off economic collapse from coronavirus and the lockdowns that occurred worldwide, many governments began to print more currency to prop up their economy. In the United States, many people received stimulus checks from the government, and they invested that money. Both the stock market and cryptocurrency market experienced huge gains. Meanwhile, smart investors grew concerned about the impact this government handout might have on inflation. So they looked to put their money into scarce assets that would keep their value. Precious metals saw gains, and Bitcoin, which is often referred to as digital gold because of its scarcity and high price, saw massive gains. Now everyone and their mother seems to know about and be talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Just the other day, in fact, Lindsay Lohan tweeted investment advice. This has some experts, such as Michael Burry, warning we're in a bubble. Still, other experts remain very bullish and think we could soon see Bitcoin at $100,000 or more. While I personally feel pretty good about Bitcoin's prospects long term, say a decade from now, just be aware that it is a very volatile investment and Bitcoin will very likely experience a big drawdown from its peak at some point. And as Bitcoin goes, so does the rest of the cryptocurrency market. That said, the peaks are impossible to predict. So if you're watching this video because you're new to the space and thinking of investing, be cautioned that anything you invest into cryptocurrency, you should be willing to lose. Perhaps I've been listening to audio tutorial by the professor. You can believe with me now that cryptocurrency is beyond what we are talking about. Now I am on coin market cap. Now this coin market cap, you can see the trending of crypto of cryptocurrency, and you see the categories of cryptocurrency. We now have DeFi. 
I have defy. We have defy now. We have defy. We have NFT. Among others. So <clears throat> let me show you. This DeFi, this NFT, this Metaverse, among others. So that means that cryptocurrency is advancing every day. Bitcoin now, the current price of Bitcoin now, you can see, is $42,000. This is the this is the 24 hours trade. The the circulating supply. That is what you can see there. And many more things. So, if if I open Bitcoin now, you will see the full detail of, of Bitcoin. So, if you are joining cryptocurrency, you should know that you are joining a big business, very big business. So, this is it. This is current price of. Bitcoin within 24 hours. This is the low. This is the high. This is the low. This is the high. This is the low price. This is the high price. For now, within 24 hours. So, and this is the the uh, the trading view. Trading view. This is the trading view. I'm opening the trading view for you to view it. Do you see? Do you see the trading view? Do you see? Do you see pink, uh, Bitcoin at its peak? This was this was this was the peak of Bitcoin. Do you see the peak? Do you see the peak? What this you can see, you can see the peak was above 68k. Then you can see that was the peak. Now, here is it. You can see so Bitcoin has been a legend. You can see, you can see the price of Bitcoin for many years. Do you see? Do you see the trend? Can you imagine the trend of Bitcoin? Can you imagine the trend? This from 2018. This from 2018 now. See the price then. See the price then. 2018. Do you see the price then? How, how much was that? From 2000. From two thousand seven hundred eighty-five dollar. Do you see the price then? Do you see the trend? The trend. I, I believe you can see the trend now. You can see the trend. I'm trying to compare the trend with the history. You can see the trend. So share the trend around COVID period. See around COVID period 2019 stroke 20, do you see the peak? There's the first peak there around then. Then after that, COVID continue. COVID continue 2022. Here we are. So Bitcoin has been a legend. She's surviving. So if you want to join cryptocurrency, I think you've heard and you've seen the legend of cryptocurrency. 
the bullish and the bearish the red one are the bearish this red candle means people are selling the green means people are buying so the green is called the bullish candle the red is called the bearish candle that is meaning here up and down you can see people comment hmm. see it's a bitcoin someone likes a people only care about cryptocurrency to get rich of the dummy buying for more and then they left holding the bag eventually there is, isn't going to be any more dummy left when that happens that is when this all crashes this is literally full gold you can see the statement of people due to the bearish of the bitcoin then see the Due to the bullish, see what someone say. Say I am new at this and I don't know what coin to buy. Please help me. Do you see? They are trying to compare wares that can cause bearishness and bullish of the coin. These are wares. Mm, social analysis. So wares have power tongue has power to alter anything not just anything even it affects cryptocurrency so what people say about cryptocurrency affect the price so some people say that uh, crypto is something that go up come, come down go up these are the reason why it goes up and come down comments bad comments bad guess bad law and everything so Welcome to cryptocurrency. I welcome to short tips YouTube channel. For more uh, info like this, you may try your best to watch over and over and subscribe to our channel for more updates. So, thank you for standing by. Comment, like, thumb up, and subscribe.